All right, everyone, I think we're going to get started. I'm just cautious of time. It's 5.02. Um, so I'll just respect your time and, and we'll get started. And those that are in the waiting room, we'll just admit them as we see them coming in. Welcome, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us today. We are really happy to, to have you here to learn more about the Indigenous Teacher Education Program, or what we like to call ITEP. My name is Vicki Lewis, and I'm one of the academic and career advisors here at the Faculty of Education. I'm also joined by Lindsay Morcom, who is one of the instructors um, in the ITEP program. So thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining us. Happy to be here. Annie Bojo. Amazing. So we, as I said, we are here to tell you a little bit more about the Indigenous Teacher Education Program here at Queen's. We commonly refer to it as ITEP. We're going to start the presentation today by talking about the program itself. Then we're going to move into kind of the admission requirements for the program, and we're going to end it with a question and answer period. So if you have any questions that come up for Lindsay or I, feel free to pop them in the chat. I think we're going to have a small group, um, so we're happy to field any questions that you may have there. All right, okay, let's get started. <laughs> Ani bojo kran kwe indigenous kas ma kwe ndorem oma gara ra kwe ndjiba min wa ara ko gan kun first nation de mandakwas um ni wasako de nishnabe kwe ndao min wa queens university in danoki min wa nu ma ge um so hi i'm lindsay in english um i uh, am a prof here at queens university which, which sits on the unceded territory of the anishinaabe Haudenosaunee and Huron Wendat nations um They'll try to tell you that it's not unseated through the Crawford Purchase, but um, we have no written records to confirm that. And many of the people who, who are from this territory were not present when that was made. So I would consider this certainly unseated territory. Uh, our communities continue to exist on this land today, primarily in Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee nations, as well as an urban community that is beautiful and flourishing um, and a Métis community as well. Thank you so much, Lindsay, that was amazing. All right, so as most of you know, Queen's University is one of the highest ranked post-secondary institutions in Canada when it comes to student experience. We take an inclusive approach to education and we're often learning um, beyond the classroom um, walls, which we're gonna talk a little bit about later. The Indigenous Teacher Education Program here at Queen's is run over four successive semesters. So it begins in May and it concludes 14 months later, the following August. So this means that our graduates are getting out into the working world a year earlier than many other universities. As many of you probably have heard, the teaching market is right now is very, it's excellent for classroom teachers. And so we want to get you out into the classrooms as soon as possible. And we are one of the only universities that offers um, the condensed program. So um, it is, is something to keep in mind when you're looking at other universities. Graduates from the program will receive a Bachelor of Education degree, which will qualify them to be Ontario certified teachers. And as part of the program, we actually offer 21 weeks of placement or practicum as we call it, um, that will be based around your program track as well. There, we're gonna talk a little bit about alternative practicum um, later in the presentation. And one of the really amazing um, parts of Queens is we have a full team of support staff here for you. Not only do we have embedded counselors, but we have a full team of academic and career advisors to assist you with your job search. Um, we help with interviewing and getting ready those career related documents. Um, and we're one of the only universities that actually has a career services. So it's a pretty unique feature here at Queens. Um, we also have an amazing ITEP office, which is fully staffed um, to, hear, to ensure that you have a safe space here to get any kind of support you need while you're here at Queens. So I'm going to pass it over to Lindsay, and she's going to talk about some of the really cool pieces of the ITEP program. Um, so I've been teaching for ITEP for um, nine years, I guess it is. And it's really one of the brightest things in my life. I love teaching these courses. Um, right now, I'm co-teaching with Kelly Maracle, who's a really experienced teacher from Tyendinaga Mohawk Territory. Um, and we've got a great class. We have a nice balance of Indigenous educational theory and hands-on practical learning. So I think that that's important because it'll allow you to have an academic challenge while also learning the skills that you need to be a good teacher. 
Um, everything is embedded in anti-colonial, decolonial theory, as well as um, based on the premise of Indigenous leadership. So we're really excited about that. We do have an elder in residence who's embedded within the ATEP area. So she serves everyone through the, through the faculty, but her office is right with us. Uh, so you can also learn traditional teachings from her. Um, we do a lot of outdoor land-based uh, activities. This picture was taken when I was on sabbatical, but they're um, cleaning a bison hide, uh, which was tanned by the students and is now in the ATEP lounge, uh, or ITAP lounge, sorry. Um, we do a lot of learning both outdoors at West Campus, as well as at Elbow Lake Environmental Education Center as well. Um, we provide you with an opportunity to specialize in Indigenous education with the primary courses being taught by Indigenous professors. Um, and we look to empower you to, to create leadership roles within the faculty so that you're educating other people as well um, in decolonial theory, in anti-colonial teaching, anti-racist teaching, um, and pro-Indigenous teaching. So uh, I think our students really embrace the opportunity to be leaders within the faculty. Um, so some of the cool things that we've had uh, on campus, we've had a really great Indigenous speaker series. So we've had Indigenous speakers from around the world come and address our class. Last year, one of my favorites was Leroy Littlebear. Um, he changed how I think about education. We've had Tanya Talaga, um, David Bouchard, the children's author has come on a couple of occasions. And we look forward to continuing that. And we're open to suggestions from students as well on how we can develop that. We have our own resource center. So we have essentially an indigenous education library where all the content has been vetted by indigenous educators. The majority is purchased from Good Minds, which is an indigenous public publisher and clearinghouse. Um, and that's available to uh, help you meet the needs of really any subject area. We also connect with Four Directions Indigenous Student Center to provide support for indigenous students socially and academically. We have a sacred medicine garden right on site. We grow all of our own medicines. Um, so we have the four sacred medicines of sage, sweetgrass, tobacco, and um, gijik is cedar in English, sorry. Um, and so the tobacco particularly was really flourishing this year, it was beautiful. And then we grow Three Sisters Garden and other traditional um, foods as well as um, native plants. We do offer, like I said, leadership opportunities for events like Orange Shirt Day. The picture that you see there is um, a group of ITAP students leading Orange Shirt Day a couple of years ago. And they um, educated not only the student body, but also staff and faculty. And I really think that um, every year we do this and we do make a difference in the faculty and how teaching is done. Um, we offer specific learning opportunities for indigenous teacher candidates. So ITIP is open to people of all heritages, um, but we do have separate events that are just for the indigenous students in the class because the experience of indigenous students and indigenous teachers is different. And so we offer enrichment um, opportunities to access teachings, as well as to just be together with other Indigenous learners. Um, and we offer a great deal of land-based learning. Um, we've got some field trips, and we tend to spend several hours at a time on the land. Thanks so much, Lindsay. That is super helpful. I feel like I learned a little bit just on those two slides as well. <laughs> All right, so if that sounds good to you, um, the ITEP program you can be part of the primary junior divisions, which is junior kindergarten to grade six, or the intermediate senior divisions, which is grade seven to 12. And that if you chose intermediate senior, um, we would ask that you, that you choose two teaching subjects um, when you apply, okay? And that's because in when you're teaching at the secondary level, um, you will be, um, we will be concentrated in certain subject areas, okay? And so we're gonna talk about what we do offer here, um, but those are the two um, programs through ITEP you can apply for. Okay, so um, this is what I was kind of just talking about. If you are interested in IS, as we call it, intermediate senior, you need to choose two teaching subjects when you apply. This slide shows which teaching subjects are available here at Queen's. Um, so you can see those on the left, um, a long list there. And once you've chosen your two teaching subjects, be sure to check out our website. I'll post it in the chat at the end of the presentation. But we do have specific teaching subject requirements if you're thinking of applying to intermediate senior. For your first teaching subject, you would need five full year courses. 
Okay, and for your second teaching subject, you would need three full year courses. Um, and it's okay if, if you have half year courses, it just has to add up to the total amount of full year courses. There are some exceptions to the rule. Um, the ones that come to mind are music. So if you have um, any questions, I'm always happy to stay on after the presentation to chat with, um, to chat with anyone, okay? There, as I said, there are some specific admission requirements per teaching subject. So the ones that come to mind right off the bat are um, for our history teaching subject, we would strongly encourage our students to have a Canadian history course. Um, and that's because the Ontario curriculum is, is mostly taught through the grade 10 history course is taught through an Ontario or a Canadian perspective. So it's really important to have some background in that. Um, other ones that come to mind for chemistry, you would need an organic chemistry course, for example. So each teaching subject kind of has its own requirements, okay? And finally, this is a question we often get. Um, we accept up to one full year course outside of, a, uh, of the subject area. So if you think that it had enough content in it in that subject area, but it's not necessarily in that department, um, we, we may be able to count it. So for example, we often see students that have you know, biochemistry degrees that want to apply to um, biology. If it's a biochem course, um, typically we'll only take one full year course, okay? So uh, if you have any questions about that, you maybe have a unique degree coming from another university, just let me know, I'm happy to chat about it with you. All right, so now that you know a little bit about the program, we want to give you a breakdown of how the program works. So our program includes specific class blocks where you'll be here in Kingston, followed by practical blocks or what we call practicum. Um, and we call that um, practicum, it's, it's really where you're in the classroom. I won't go through the whole schedule because you can see it here, you can snap a picture, but you can see that um, the in-class learning is interspersed with the practicum. So you're in Kingston for a little bit of time and then you're out on practicum, then you come back to Kingston, et cetera. This allows our students to learn from the faculty, collaborate um, with some of their peers, and then you go out and apply that learning throughout your practicum, okay? So it's, it's, it's designed to really support you in that way. So more about practicum, this seems to be a, a question we get a lot about over email, so we wanna make sure we cover it here in the presentation. Um, as part of the program, you will have 18 weeks of practicum in an Ontario, an Ontario publicly funded school. We work with 26 boards currently, and they stretch from Burlington to Cornwall. You can see the map on the right hand side there is a list of the public boards we work with. The next slide is a list of the Catholic um, boards that we that we work with. So we like to point that out. Um, please note that your first practicum, which would be in May, so it's kind of right when you start the program, will actually be in Kingston. So it's really important for our applicants to know is that you must be in Kingston in May for your practicum. To come. And then the, the, the rest of the practicum, you will have um, some choices, which we'll talk about. In a little bit, Lindsay's going to talk about the alternative practicum, which will be in March. And that's where you'll have the opportunity to complete a practicum outside of the traditional classroom and up here in Ontario or in a related field. Okay. And Lindsay's going to give you some examples in the next um, a couple of slides about that. So when you come to Queens and um, when you're admitted, you will choose four school boards that you're willing to work in within our designated catchment area, okay? So those maps. Teacher candidates could be placed in any of those four boards that you've listed. And um, alongside that, we'll request the address, so where you'll be living, and you could be placed up to an hour from your home location if you have um, access to a car. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind as we have um, a couple hundred students to place, and so, um, you have to be willing to drive a little bit for your practicum or um, take public transport if you don't um, have access to a car. And all of the practicum placements are actually arranged by our practicum office here. They're an amazing team. Um, and they'll be on some of our offer webinars later in February. So if you have more questions directly about practicum, it, it is good to chat with them about it. We always like to mention that um, Kingston isn't a huge city. Um, so we don't have a large enough population here to support um, all of our teachers candidates to be placed here in Kingston, okay? So there could be um, a small percentage that are placed elsewhere. So just something to keep in mind. 
um, that we would encourage our teacher candidates to think about where do you want to teach in the future? Um, that might help you choose um, those four boards that we ask you to list. So now I'm going to pass it back over to Lindsay, who's going to talk to you a little bit about that alternative practicum. So we've had students um, both stay in Kingston, travel within Canada, and go international for alternative practicum. We keep a list of where we've had successful placements, and so we're able to help you out, uh, make those connections to see where you want to go and see how we can get you there. Um, locally, we have a lot of opportunities. We have, like I say, a really booming um, lively urban Indigenous community. So there's lots of organizations within the community that serve Indigenous populations, um, and they've taken on, um, on folks as well. So things like the Kingston Indigenous Languages Nest. So if you're interested in language revitalization, Kiln is for you. Um, I'm heavily involved with Kiln. We have some really great programming there. We're connected to Gwadjere, which is early on, if you're interested in, in young, young children and how they learn. We've got a really wonderful Algonquin woman who runs that program. Um, we've had folks with children's aid. We've had folks going to local museums. Um, so for example, the Museum of Healthcare. We've had students serve at local conservation areas. Um, so if you're someone who's very interested in land-based learning um, or with the Queen's University Biological Station. Uh, and we do have um, significant connections in Kingston to the carceral system. There are five prisons, I think it is, is that right, Vicki? Um, which unfortunately, as we know, are, um, have significant overrepresentation of indigenous inmates. And that has, um, we look at that in, in ITAP about how that is connected to colonization and how that's connected to the inherent racism that's present in our systems. So we've had students go there to try and create programs that are gonna serve those indigenous inmates better than what's um, currently in place. So there are also opportunities within Canada. If you want to stay a little bit closer, still the NCR is great. Of course, lots of, um, lots of programs and services there. Uh, that's the Museum of History. We've had students go there. They have really an awesome connection to Indigenous community. They represent it really well. Um, friendship centers are common. Kingston doesn't have a friendship center, um, but most urban places do. So you can look into going to a friendship center. Um, Child and family services will often uh, either be Indigenous focused or have uh, branches that serve Indigenous community. We've had students go to multiple universities. So if you're interested in graduate school, it's not uncommon to go shadow a professor for a few weeks or well, for the three weeks and see if that's something that you might be interested in pursuing. And then we've also had many students go to Northern communities and to on-reserve schools, either in Southern Ontario or through um, what's now Canada. Um, internationally, we've got some good connections at Queen's. So we're part of the Matariki um, Network of Universities, and there's um, an Indigenous focus within that. It's not an Indigenous focus program, but there is an Indigenous stream within it. And so that gives us connections to universities in Sweden. Um, so there's the Sami Indigenous population in Sweden, as well as the United States, um, Australia, and New Zealand. And we've had students pursue opportunities um, in all of those, particularly Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we've also had students go to Hawaii, um, and we've had students explore opportunities in Africa, India, and other countries with experiences of colonization. So those aren't settler colonial countries, but they were colonized, and they were subject to the same kind of oppression through the colonial system. And so it's interesting to go there and see how decolonizing education is happening in those contexts. Thanks so much, Lindsay. That was really interesting. I love the examples. All right, so um, where are we located? This is kind of some of the, you know, um, meat and potatoes here in the presentation. Um, well, Queen's University is located in Kingston. Probably most of you know that. Um, we like to think that we're halfway to everywhere. <laughs> we're located halfway between Toronto and Ottawa. We're just um, 45 minutes from the New York border. And our building is specifically located in Duncan MacArthur Hall. And we house a wide range of teaching facilities, as I mentioned, our ITEP office, um, we have support and counseling services here, administrative offices, of course, and a prayer room. We have dedicated art spaces, including a large drama studio, a music room, visual art studios as well. And one of the most prominent features on what we call the West Campus is the education library. It's open year round, and the library contains books and teaching aids that you'll find super helpful while you're here. As I mentioned, there's also the ITEP Lounge and Library, as well as the Sacred Medicine Garden, 
that Lindsay talked about. We're surrounded by green space and gardens, as well as outdoor spaces um, that are dedicated to instruction. And we also have an outdoor classroom that was recently added. Kingston, in terms of a city, has lots to offer. I grew up here. It's an amazing place. We're a historical city. Um, we have lots of attractions. We have our Fort Henry. We have farmers markets, art galleries, museums, great performances and acts come through Kingston because it's kind of halfway to everywhere. And um, we have great community events and some really great food. We have a fun fact, we actually have um, the most restaurants per capita um, in Canada. So we recommend that while students are here, they check those out. In terms of housing, um, there are a wide range of housing opportunities. Because students are on those class blocks and then also on practicum blocks, we find many students find long-term housing such as Airbnbs, um, but there are lots of great supports and options here for housing um, if, you, if you'd like to live within the student community, okay? So there's a few websites there um, that you're more than welcome to check out, um, but we're happy to share them. This presentation is recorded, so it will be posted um, if you'd like to access those, those links later. So now we're going to focus on the admission requirements. We talked a little bit about them before, um, but these are our general requirements for the program. So they're, re they're required or recommended for everyone that's applying to Queen's um, Faculty of Education. And that's to, that, our that our applicants have at least a B minimum average and that we look at a cumulative average. So we look at um, all four years of your degree or the equivalent. Um, we prefer a four-year honors degree over a three-year degree, but um, as long as the applicant would have 120 units, which is the equivalent to an honors degree, we would, we would accept that. And then we also strongly encourage our applicants to have a half-year course in developmental psych or a full-year course in introductory psychology. Okay, so that just gives you extra points on your application if you have it, um, but these are just recommendations. As I said, if you're interested in the primary junior ITEP program, we do look for these recommended courses. We would ask that our students or our applicants have at least a half year course in some of these areas. Again, it's recommended though. Um, and this is because these are some of the curriculum areas here in Ontario. So it just makes you a, a more well-rounded applicant if you have a little bit of background in some of these areas, such as English, math, science, anything in the arts, geography or Canadian history and health or and or physical education. If you're applying to intermediate senior, those grades seven to 12, remember you have to have two teaching subjects. Here is the link, um, and I'll, I will share this around, um, for those specific teaching subject course requirements that we talked about, um, but just make sure you check that out before applying, okay? So once you've submitted your OUAC application, which we're gonna talk about in the next slide, within kind of three to five business days, you're gonna receive an email from Queens with your next steps. This will give you all the important information you need to know about your supplemental documents for the ITEP program. Um, it will also be listed on the Queen's portal, which we call um, SOLAS, the Student Online University Center. And that will list all of the supplemental documents for the ITEP program that you are going to need. For every application here at Queen's, we require a personal statement of experience or what we call the PSE. It's usually the document we get the most questions about. Um, it's two questions. Um, one page document that allows you to tell us a little bit about the experiences you've had as a person and, and what might, why they may help you as a future educator. We always say there's no right or wrong for this document, but we encourage our applicants to spend time on it because it really is weighted quite heavily in your application. We always encourage you to highlight your qualities, your capabilities, and your experiences coming from the, coming into the program and focus on the impact of your experiences. So why will these experiences make you a good teacher um, or a good teacher in the future? So specifically for the ITEP program, there are usually a few supplementary documents that you'll need, <clears throat> excuse me. You'll need to submit an applicant information sheet, which is really just your um, like basic details, um, doesn't take too much work and also a resume, which provides a clear and kind of concise overview of both your academic background and work experience. And these two documents are submitted directly to Queens using um, a system called Job Form. Um, so, but when I, as I said, you know, when you apply to Queens, you don't have to remember all of this. We will send you an email to say, you know, these are the documents you need to submit. 
and they will be posted on your themes portal. So you'll be able to see the to-do list items that you have, okay? So if this all kind of sounds good to you and you're ready to apply, you would head to the OUFT's um, website, okay? So it's, the link is just there on the slide. So OUAC is the same website that you would have applied um, with to apply to um, your undergrad degree. TEAS is the specific uh, site for um, teaching. So it's the Teaching Education Application Services. Um, and it's a specific portal. You can see it there in the blue square on the screen, okay? Applications are open now, which is amazing. Um, and they will stay open until December 1st. Um, our deadlines are firm, so please keep that in mind when you're um, submitting your application. And remember, as I said, you can apply to up to three programs here at Queen's. So if ITEP is one of the programs you're interested in, you know, I would encourage you, um, you can apply to multiple and that's totally okay. Just please make sure that you, you rank your choices, um, you know, specifically and because we will only give you one offer of admission. So just make sure you rank them appropriately, okay? The exact program codes needed for OUAC are listed in the yellow box there on the slide. Q12 is for applicants that are interested in the primary junior ITEP program. And Q32 is for those interested in the intermediate senior ITEP program. Okay, the deadlines um, are listed there, but um, the deadline for the PSE and those supplementary documents is December 10th. So you actually have a little bit of time after you've submitted your application to work on those, but I would encourage you to get them in as soon as they're done. Our offers will roll out in mid-February, and then the acceptance deadline will be two weeks later on March 1st. So you have a little bit of time, and we do offer, um, offer webinars during those times, so you can come um, speak with some of the staff here and faculty to learn a little bit more about the program if you're kind of on the fence. Okay, and then for those that are in, I think I, I recognize some names. Um, so if you are in the concurrent education program right now and you're in your fourth year, um, the application process looks a little bit different because you don't have to apply on OUAC. Okay, so that's the difference. You've already applied, you're already here at Queen's, so you're just applying for the program track. So you'll still be required to submit those two documents that I listed, the applicant information sheet and the resume. Um, okay, but you don't have to submit the PSE because you submitted a PSE when you um, when you got into the program originally in first year. So just those two documents, and they'll be submitted on job form as well. So if you're a Con Ed student, feel free to hang around. Um, if you can't hang around, please feel free to schedule a session with me. I'm happy to go over those documents with you to make sure that you know how to submit them um, because this program is open to um, Con Ed students and also to consecutive students, all right? So we'd encourage you to check out our website. It has really great information, especially with the ITEP program. Um, this program is so amazing. We want you to make sure that you have all the information that you um, possibly need to make that informed decision. If you have any further questions, general questions can be sent to the EDUC email. So EDUC student services at queensu.ca. If you wanna know specifically more about the ITEP program, you can either email the EDUC student services or you can email the ITEP office also. Okay, um, any questions for those consecutive applicants that want to know more about the actual application on OUAC should really contact OUAC directly, okay? Um, the T's website, um, if it's like, I can't figure out how to apply or submit this form, please contact OUAC because they're the experts behind that, that web page. All right, so that is kind of it. That wraps up the presentation portion of um, our information session tonight. Um, we like to keep it kind of short and sweet, but we're definitely happy to, to stick around to answer any questions that you may have. If you have any for Lindsay, you're more than welcome. I'm gonna stop recording. So you're more than welcome to, to put your, um, your video on if, if you have any questions. I just have to figure out, there we go, stop.